Not too long ago, in a galaxy that's really, really near, did you know that monkeys, chimps, dogs, cats, and even tortoises have been to space? I wish we could send you into space. Exactly. Why hasn't there been a Singaporean that's gone to space? Ooh. 20 seconds and counting. Mission sequence start. How can a tortoise get to space before a Singaporean? It doesn't make sense. We're great at math, science, and technology. We've got a world-famous airline and one of the world's best airports. I know what we're going to do today. It's going to blow our minds. We are going to find out what it takes to send a Singaporean into space. Five, four, three, two, one. No animals were harmed in the making of this teaser. Hey, busy bot. What's up? We're trying to solve the mystery of Singaporeans in space. There's never been a Singaporean in space. Yeah, that's the mystery. That's not a mystery. Singapore was never part of the space race. History droid. Show them the footage. In the 1960s, the United States and the Soviet Union were in a space race. Both countries wanted to be the first to send a man into space. It's quiz time! Alright guys, a little history lesson. Who was the first person in space? Joseph Schooling, Yuri Gagarin, Thanos, or Neil Armstrong? That's right! The first man in space was Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. In 1961, he orbited around Earth in his spacecraft. And while the space race was going on, Singapore was a bit busy being a new independent country. So that's why we've never sent a Singaporean to space. But why couldn't we send one now? We'd like to speak to an astronaut, please. Well, hello, everyone. Hello. 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 I'm a former NASA astronaut and International Space Station commander. Over my 15-year NASA career, I did fly four times into space. To become an astronaut, it's very competitive. You have to have a minimum of at least a bachelor's degree in science or engineering, and you have to be in excellent health. Uh, once you go through the process, if you get selected to interview, then you do go down to NASA and, and spend a week in NASA getting medically checked and doing an interview. And then it's uh, just a waiting game. And if you're fortunate enough to be selected, then you probably will get to go fly at least once. How was your journey into space? We trained for about a year and a half to uh, prepare. It was uh, very emotional, of course. And uh, once I got into space and looked back at the Earth, it was just a fantastic experience. The Earth is very beautiful, the colors are very bright, and our, our Earth is just so beautiful in, in many different ways. So what would it take for Singapore to send an astronaut into space? Singapore could partner with a country that currently flies astronauts to space, whether it's NASA in the United States or the Russians or uh, even China. Those are the three nations that currently can send astronauts to space. Let's go and train to be astronauts. Okay, I'll head to the Science Centre to figure out where space is. And we'll go talk to some people about doing astronaut training. I can wear my spacesuit for the rest of the episode, right? Mm. has got to find out exactly where space is, while well, Simon and I are off to find out if we have what it takes to be astronauts, a job that lets us work in space. Uh, space is much closer than you think. It's just 100 kilometers away from the sea level. So this 100 kilometers away from the sea level is what we call the common line. Above this line, in theory, beyond this line, we have entered what we call the exosphere, where the satellites are orbiting around the Earth. So you're saying that space is only 100 kilometers away? Yes, that's right. You see, science is 
mists break down the skies above us into layers. At the bottom is the troposphere, the layer where planes fly. The stratosphere is directly above it. Here, you find the ozone layer that protects us from the sun's rays. Finally, above that at 100 kilometers up is the Karma Line. This is where most people, including NASA, consider where Earth's atmosphere ends and space begins. So the Marina Bay Sands is 200 meters tall. That means if I stood five Marina Bay Sands on top of each other, that would be a kilometer, right? Yes. So if I stood 500 Marina Bay Sands on top of each other, I'd be in space? Yes, that's right. Now how do you do that so fast? I play a lot of mahjong with my mom. So space is close, but how long will it take us to go there? Uh, in a car, 100 kilometers would take just about an hour. But for a rocket travelling upwards, it would take about three to five minutes. What? It takes me eight minutes to go to my coffee shop. So I just need a rocket. Easy. I'll catch a ride from my friend Simon. He makes rockets. One, two, three, four. Ji Hang told me to meet him here to discuss astronaut training. I know what you're thinking. Is this a metaphor? No, it's a planet, and we're trying to leave it. You gotta be fit to fly into space. Actually, to qualify for the NASA astronaut training program, you need to be a US citizen. But what if you're Singaporean? Well, there are some training programs that you can take up in Singapore. For example, the Space Academy of Singapore, and also the mission discovery exercise that is actually held in the Stanford American School. Astronauts need to have a degree or master's degree related in the STEM field. For example, physical sciences, biological sciences, and even computer science. Or you can also be a pilot with more than a thousand hours of flight experience in a jet aircraft. You also need to go through a number of physical exercises during the uh, NASA training program. For example, you need actually need to swim across a 25 meter pool three times lengthwise and also back and forth with a uh, spacesuit and tennis shoes. And then after that, 10 minutes of treading in water non-stop. Apart from fitness, is there any other training we need to do to prepare us for space? Oh, yo, what is this? All right, so Shara, you know, astronauts, when they're taking off, Right, they face up to 3 Gs of acceleration or uh -huh. 3 Gs of force and the rockets usually reach space in about 8 minutes uh -huh. and their rockets have to reach speeds up to 28,000 kilometers per hour 28,000 kilometers? Yes. And that's around the altitude of 100 kilometers in space Okay right, So they experience something like this Shall we try this? Sure! Let's go! This is an example of 3G forces and what it feels uh, like. But the second you hit space, you feel the microgravity. Ever wonder why astronauts float around in space just like this? In an environment of microgravity, we become weightless. Kind of what it's like when you're skydiving or floating in the pool. Oh, that weird sensation in my stomach. Well, that's probably something we'll feel during weightlessness, something associated to a microgravity environment. In that environment, the body does not feel any contact forces. So it's the kind of like free falling and floating around. So you'd be very uncomfortable probably, and you have nothing to kind of like pull you or to anchor yourself onto. That's great, but I can no longer feel my face. Let's try some different training. Something. Closer to the ground? <laughs> this is not what I had in mind. Actually, some of the best trainings for the astronaut before they go for their space missions occur underwater. And they happen in pools like this. Are you really telling me that astronauts train to be in space in a swimming pool? Yes, absolutely. Before astronauts can launch into space, they have to go for a swim. Being in water lets astronauts experience long periods of weightlessness. Okay, I understand the scuba gear, but what's that for? Right, you will be actually pushing this pram from this part of the pool 
right to the other end of the school, which is something similar to the astronauts' training. Astronauts need to learn how to walk and work in an environment of microgravity. And they need to be able to do it for hours. We did it for just 10 minutes, and boy, it's no fun being suspended in this state. Oh. Oh. I am so exhausted I could scream. But it wouldn't make a difference if I did scream, because there's no air in space, which means sound cannot travel. So if I did scream, it would sound a bit like this. So let's rewind and remove all the screaming tracks. Seriously? We need our video editor to show us what it's really like. You have to be scientifically accurate, right? Okay, fine, fine. Mute screaming clips. Because nothing we do in space can be heard. Right. We know what it takes to be astronauts in space. Mm. Hopefully, Avanesh has found a way to get us there. Everything on Earth that wants to go into space needs to hitch a ride on a rocket. Simon makes rockets in Singapore. He's a 29-year-old rocket scientist. Simon's dream rocket will be about 18 meters high. That's about six floors here. Even then, it's still about six times smaller than some of the largest rockets ever made, which tower as high as 110 meters. So when can we launch this rocket? Well, Singapore is a little small, but there are some very convenient locations in the region, uh, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, and in Australia, of course. So what are your rockets for? In general, I use to launch satellites into space, and satellites help us communicate with one another, and they help us understand our worlds and each other better. So what needs to be done to send a Singapore rocket into space? It takes money to build rockets. So how much would it cost to launch a rocket like this? Well, this small rocket costs only around $15,000 to build in terms of the equipment and the hardware. That's compared to uh, what SpaceX is charging, which is $60 million for a pretty heavy one. Because, well, humans are heavy. We need life support systems, which are also heavy. Uh, rockets which launch people must be very reliable, so they have to be launched multiple times before they get, they're actually qualified for missions with people on board. How far are we from sending a Singaporean into space? Well, I like to think that when you're my age, it will be pretty normal. And I'm 29, so we have 15 years to get to that point. I think we have a good chance in uh, training and sending a Singaporean astronaut into space with a partner organization within the next five years. Well, it looks like I might need to be thinking a little bit smaller. Are you go for lunch? One small step for man. And an even smaller step for Singapore. We're a small country. We're gonna need a reason to spend that much money. In fact, why are you even going to space? What kept you? Phew, that was quick. Actually, it got me thinking, why do we even bother going up to space? That's why I wanted to ask Mark, what's the point of us going up there? We do take a lot of photographs, and these photographs allow us uh, to have better insights on climate change uh, and how this uh, planet evolves. Singapore might not have sent humans to space, but we have sent satellites. Satellites are like our eyes in the sky. They give us a bird's eye view of what's going on, not just in Singapore, but the region. There are about 2,500 active ones orbiting around Earth all day, every day. Just by looking at these uh, photographs, we can derive a lot of information. Additionally, uh, this is extremely important in weather monitoring as it provides us clearer insights to the clock to understand how the weather evolves. Gives us a very good idea of when to bring out an umbrella, um, you know, when you're going out. Is it difficult to take the photos? 
satellites at these altitudes move at extremely high speeds of about 7 kilometers per second. Now that equates to moving from the eastern part of Singapore to the western part of Singapore in just about 6 to 7 seconds. So it's extremely important that at moving at such speeds, we need to be able to synchronize when we are going to take these images. Hey, you still need to find us a ride into space. Definitely. I think. And we need to train to take pictures more accurately and quickly while on the move. I have an idea. You know those motorcycles with the, um, the, uh, what are they called? Sidecars. Exactly! Let's take some photos. We're in a moving vehicle. We've got a target, the Sultan Mosque at Kampong Galam. <clears throat> and we've got our safety. Mm. Let's do this. We're pretending to be satellites taking pictures in space. This sidecar isn't as fast as a satellite, but already we're seeing how hard it is to snap a precise picture while moving. <sighs> that was a lot harder than it looked. So I found a scientist who actually worked at NASA who has the exact same mission as us. Hi, I'm Dr. Bidushi Bhattacharya. I'm a former NASA scientist and I have my own space company now. Hello, I thought you've been trying to get Singaporeans into space. So we do a couple different things. We help students in Singapore launch experiments to the International Space Station. The International Space Station is basically a lab in outer space and astronauts live there. And we can send them experiments from students. We've sent up seven so far. We'll be sending up our eighth in a few months. So if you're a student and you want to understand how does bacteria grow in space, how do plants grow in outer space? What you do is you keep a copy of the experiment here on Earth, like let's say you grow some bacteria here on Earth, and then you send up another sample of bacteria to outer space, and the astronauts take the little box that you've sent up, and they plug it in, and then they send you back data. What are they doing to get actual Singaporeans up there? And I truly believe this will happen in the next 10 to 20 years, is you will be able to go up as a space tourist, Hmm. Avenir says it's going to be a while yet before we can send a Singaporean into space as an astronaut. Maybe there's another way. Maybe we can spend our holidays in space? Meet at Hawker Centre where a... What? Why are we in the Hawker Centre? Well, someone who has spent many years teaching about the Earth and other planets told us to meet here. And why are we dressed like the three bears? Well, the expert told us to dress like this. There she is! Hi everyone! Hi. Hello! Hello! Firstly, have some noodles. Ah, too hot. Mm, too cold. Mine are just nice. So exactly, that is the Goldilocks noodles. So Earth is in this Goldilocks zone where it is not too far from the sun, neither is it too near the sun. So the temperatures are just nice for liquid water to exist and it's very comfortable for life to live in. So other planets like say Venus will be too hot because it's too near the sun and planets like Neptune will be too cold because it's too far away from the sun. Planets which we can live on are called Goldilocks planets. Earth is an example of a Goldilocks planet. It's not too hot or too cold for us to live in. For us to go to another planet in space, we need to find a Goldilocks planet. A planet just like Earth. So are there any other Goldilocks planets like Earth that maybe we can visit? So the nearest one is called Kepler-186f. It is also a Earth cousin where it's not too far from the star. Neither is it too near the star, so it's very comfortable. Let's go there then. But I think you have to pack a lot of belongings with you because it's 558 light years away. What? 
Well, one light year is 9 trillion kilometers. That's 9 with 12 zeros at the back. So 550 times 9 trillion equals to 5022 trillion kilometers. And if I drive at 100 kilometers per hour, that would mean it would take me 50.2 trillion hours to get there. That's 5020000000000000 hours. That's a long way to go to a planet just like ours. How did you work out those numbers? I play mahjong a lot with my aunties. So, we can't go on holiday to another planet? Well, maybe not yet, but we can go to space for a holiday. Space tourism? That's great! Singaporeans love to be tourists. Hi Eunice, you're the strategic advisor of Space for Humanity. Can you tell us what your role is? Well, uh, Space for Humanity is an organisation where um, we want to democratise uh, going to space. And what that means is that we want to be able to give people access to go to space. As you know, space travel is very expensive, but with Space for Humanity, um, the thing is that you can actually apply for the programme if you're above 21, and you have to go through a couple of selection uh, rounds. But if you do get selected, uh, Space for Humanity will actually sponsor your astronaut training program. But when you come back, you then have to leverage the experience and do good for humanity. So can Singaporeans apply? Yes, definitely. In fact, I would like more Singaporeans to apply for this. Yes, we finally found a way to get Singaporeans into space. Maybe it'll be me. Based on your investigation, Astronauts require intense training and there are companies trying to send Singaporeans into space. Yes, Singapore definitely has a future in space. Correct, and I send up a firework. Let's not talk about the firework. And if Singaporeans can't go up as astronauts, we can go up as tourists. To space anyway, not to any other planet. Not till we can reach another Goldilocks planet like Earth. But we will get there, eventually. Hey, where are you going? Uh, you can't leave us hanging here. Yeah, I booked a facial. 